Welcome once again to Real Insight with William McKnight. I want to welcome you to the very first show, and I'm very honored to have a special guest for us, and his name is Victor Vasquez. Okay. Now, this morning I did have some coffee, for, but for some reason I have what's called coffee dyslexia. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the name of the company that you're working with? Security First Title. Security First yeah. Title. And Wonder. let me say, man, what an honor to be part of your first <laughs> podcast, man. I When I got the call that you're launching this and wanted to be your first guest, I feel very honored. So I hope I can definitely bring it today for your audience. Well, that's very kind of you, sir. Absolutely. But let me tell you, Asa Gomez is my broker here in Allure Realty. She wanted for me to meet you. And she goes, he reminds me of you. And so I had a chance to meet you. You were working for Nation's Title. Yeah, yeah, years ago. Uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many years has it been? Well, actually, this week I've been in the industry for 21 years this wow. week. Yeah, so Nation's Title, that was probably, I was with them for 13 years. So it's probably been, it's been a long time. I can't do the math right now. I need <laughs> yes. my coffee. <laughs> but so we've been in the industry for quite a yeah. bit. And, yeah. and we've had parallel um, careers. Right. You were in the title business. Mm -hmm. I've been in real estate for that long too. And uh, we've run into each other so many times. Yes. So it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. I'm, I'm hoping you can give us some insight as to what's going on in the title world. Absolutely. Nowadays. And if I may say, yes. um, I've always tell people the story. Uh -huh. I never, like when I first saw you, uh -huh. I didn't know who you were. Right. Like I saw you at, uh, I was at the Green Belly Ranch. It was summer. <laughs> I was in my young days. I was like my early, very early 20s. Yes. So I see this guy, happy go lucky, with a bunch of friends, <laughs> six pack going around. And I'm like, wow, I wonder what that guy does. So I, I have that image ingrained in me yes. because that's when I started my career, yes. right? So then I see this guy just surrounded by people that love them and just, I was like, I wonder what he does. And then lo and behold, like years later, I get to meet you, right. I get to know you, we become friends, and now we've been friends for years. So yes. it's just crazy, <laughs> man, just crazy how But you know happens. what, uh, before I became um, a real estate agent mm -hmm. and um, now I'm a broker, it, I was a nerd. I'm still a nerd. You told me. From yeah, hard. I, yeah. was, I was a programmer. Yeah. And I just didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted something different. Mm -hmm. I was raising my son. Um, he was then about 11. Mm -hmm. And I had custody of him. So I wanted to be home. So I knew I had to make a change. And right. it was a positive change. Yeah. When uh, I was in Green Valley, I was mm -hmm. just enjoying life. Yeah. You know, I'd, I was single. And I was a single father. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're right. I enjoyed Las Vegas. I had a great time here. And and now that son that was twelve is in his thirties now, is that amazing? Wow, man. you're a father now. I'm a father now yeah. too. Yeah. How old yeah. is your son? He's two. Wow. He's two. I love your I love your pictures. You're so, thank you. you thank you're you. You're so dedicated to your son. And yeah, and you know that's something that in our industry we have to be careful, right? Yes. We have to. And a lot of my colleagues gave me the best advice before my son was born. Okay. A lot of them went through divorces. Yes. A lot of them went through a lot of heartaches because yes. they had to decide, mm -hmm. do I go and see my kid's performance or do I close this file that needs to be done today? Yes. And if I don't, I mean, the, I will risk losing my client. Right. And the other day, the client was lost, not because uh, of the particular situation, right. because of the one time they couldn't. Right. And now this time they never get back. Mm -hmm. You know, so when my son was about to be born, a lot of my colleagues, mm -hmm. you know, they actually sat me down and they gave me that best advice that they they, right. they they told me and stuff like that. So I definitely commend you for being a single dad. Because Thank you. It's uh, it's hard work. It is. It is hard work. It's it is. And it's, 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 it's a balancing act. Yes, you know? it is. But anyway, let's go back to the, to the well, podcast. No, man. I appreciate that little um, insight on in you. Absolutely. And, and yes, I, I do love your pictures and mm -hmm. you have a lovely wife. And Thank you. you know, congratulations for all, Thank all of that. Thank you. Appreciate it. But let's get into the let's business. Let's get into of the title. business, man. I'm ready. Before we start, I want to go over the very basics. Okay. I, I want to assume that the typical person that's listening to this mm -hmm. podcast has no knowledge of real estate. Okay. One of the biggest questions I get from someone with, with zero experience in buying a home is why is title involved and what is their function? Maybe mm -hmm. they don't say it that way, but that is the general question I get. Can you give us some insight? Yeah, so the way they will actually put it, it's like, what is that? What is title insurance? What does that even do? Right. Do I need it? It's kind of expensive, so I need to pay it. Right. Okay. 
So the best explanation I actually can give to what title insurance is. Yes. Okay, William, question. Yes. Your, your car insurance, uh -huh. what are you paying for? I'm paying for uh, pretty much everything. Okay, but uh, what, what does that do? It, it covers me in case of somebody stealing my car, if I have an accident with someone, if they don't have any type of insurance. Okay. So it's coverage. So these are things that can potentially, I hope they never happen, but yes. these are things that potentially can happen in the future. Correct. Right, so let's look at like a linear. So car insurance, you're paying for the future if something is going to happen, which uh -huh. hopefully never does. With title insurance, you're paying in the past. Gotcha. You're paying to see, to make sure nothing has happened to that property. For example, if the home has loans, do these loans get paid off, okay? okay? Because if they haven't, then guess what? You buy this property, now you are having a title with two loans on the property, and if something happens here where these loans can become active or they get the wind of something, then they can foreclose on the property. Wow. And it has happened before. Of course. So title insurance covers the past. We're covering any type of liens, judgments, encumbrances on the property. We pretty much make a, a complete check on the title, and if uh -huh. something that is missing, we miss, then title insurance has you covered. Okay. That's what you're paying for that for. Now, lenders do require title insurance, right? Yeah, so with the lenders, it's called an ALTA policy. So with the lenders' title insurance, they just want to make sure that they're going to be on first position. They're going to make sure that their investment, which is their loan, they're on first position. Thus, if the buyer doesn't make the mortgage payment, mm -hmm. then they have the right to foreclose. Can so, you explain first position? Yeah, so in the title report, there's numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever the items are. So you mm -hmm. have your taxes, you have assessments, uh, and then you have your liens, okay? okay? So the lender, they want to be on first lien position. Gotcha. So let's say you get a, a solar panel, so uh -huh. you, you get a second loan or a uh, home equity line of credit. That lender wants to make sure that these guys are second. And they want to make sure when you buy this property, uh -huh. hey, there's no other loans. I'm going to be on first because if I don't get paid, I'm going to be foreclosing on it first. Gotcha. So that's what the lender's uh, coverage is. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. That's a great explanation. Thank you. I thought, you know, when I, <laughs> my one of my mentors told me that explanation is like, Vic, with title insurance, they're paying for the past if something happens. I'm like, Correct. no, that's a great explanation. Correct. So, so that's the simplest way I can explain it. So if it. the seller had a mechanic, or sorry, not mm -hmm. a mechanic, but a uh, tradesman come in, do a repair, mm -hmm. doesn't pay it. It comes. They, there's a lien after the sale. That's something that you, your yeah. your company will participate yeah, yeah. in, if they in resolving. Yeah, if they file, if there's a mechanics lien, okay. which uh, any type of construction, they call it a mechanics lien. Okay. If there's something filed on the property, we have to make sure we get a demand. So okay. let's say you file the mechanics lien. We're going to be contacting William. Hey, William, you file a mechanics lien. What's the balance? Right. So then our seller, which technically is selling the property now, it's going to have to agree with the amount. Mm -hmm. We pay through escrow, then you have to release the property. Right. Okay. But what happens if you don't release it? Right. But that's where the title insurance takes place. Gotcha. We, hey, we, we make sure of a lot of things to make sure everybody's covered. So bottom line is you do the best that you possibly can to provide the buyer a free and clear loan besides and the encumbrances like a loan. Exactly. Now, if it's a cash buyer, you still yeah. offer. Yeah, with a cash buyer, we definitely, you know, um, you definitely want to get title insurance. Okay. Like I always tell people, listen, when people call me, I always give them both scenarios. Okay. Listen, this is the best case scenario without uh -huh. title insurance, and this is the worst case scenario without title insurance. Correct. Like, which one do you want? Yes. You know? So then they make the decision, but I always tell people, don't risk it, it's it's your home, you know? Correct. Then many two years down the road, you're gonna find out that there was somebody that had rights to the property, that the chain of title wasn't done properly. What I mean by the chain of title, every time there's a document that gets recorded, it's in the county. Yes. So everybody knows, it's public record. Yes. So if that chain of title is not properly managed and cleaned up, because that's what we do too. We right. If we see some type of error on that chain of title, we're going back to fix it. Right. So, I mean, that's what I advise people. Make sure you get your title insurance. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Now, I want to run over a scenario that I encountered. Okay. And so I had a client that purchased a property from um, a family member, okay. an older family member. Okay. And the gentleman just wanted to go back to his country. Okay. And so um, they did the title work themselves. Mm-hmm. So he asked me to list his property, and the title company at that time requested to confirm 
that the original seller, the older gentleman that mm-hmm. moved out of the country, to confirm that he signed those documents. Okay. Now, because the document is notarized, you know, a lot of us assume that the notary is confirming the, right. the individual's information. Now, the title company asked us to confirm it because there was no title insurance right. at the time mm-hmm. of the transaction. Because any client could go to the county, mm-hmm. fill out the forms, and do this transaction. Right. Can you explain to us how and why that transaction was, why did the original individual had to come back and confirm those signatures? Absolutely, so like you said, right, anybody can go to the county and record anything. Okay. I can actually record something against your property. Mm-hmm. And the county is not gonna question it. They're just gonna record, okay? That's why there's people like us in place. Right. So in this situation, Whenever there's a signing of a grand deed, especially transferring a property, and if it's done outside of a title and escrow company without title insurance, mm-hmm. we have to check a few things. Okay. Number one, we have to make sure that that person who signed is the actual signer, that he is the one that signed a document. Because, you know, I mean, people have friends that are notaries and stuff like that, so mm-hmm. we want to make sure. So if right. it's not an approved notary through us, that document is not going to fly. Yeah. Second, we want to make sure that the person knew what he was doing. We want to make sure that he knew what he was doing, he was in all of his senses, mm-hmm. and he is not going to come back in the future and say, hey, I don't know what I was signing. Oh, and right. it happens all the time. So you see that quite I often. I see it all the time, especially oh, okay. between friends, you know, especially in a scenario where like, hey, well, I didn't qualify for a house at that time. My friend helped me. Oh. Right. So then after we transfer it to the name and then I seen it where the the person who needs to resign this, it's called an affidavit. OK. And the affidavit is to confirm. Yes, I did, in fact, sign that document. Yes, I knew what I was signing and I was not under any type of duress. Or duress duress. Is, a, yeah. is a big one, right? Exactly. Duress means in under D- pressure. To exactly. Do and like. as a notary, we're checking these things in the title company. We're making sure like, hey, they, they know what they're signing. And if there's any questions of it, hey, I'm going to stop the signing. Right. We're going to go back to the agents. We're going to just make sure they know what they're doing. So in this particular scenario, we have to check all of that. So it's okay, called gotcha. an uninsured deed. So now, as a title company, we're going to have to locate this gentleman. Uh-huh. And a lot of the times, okay, they're not, they're nowhere to be found. So what do we do there? Oh boy. So we want to make sure that that's a break on the chain of title. There's right. something here that happened. So we want to make sure we fixed it. This person signs, and mm-hmm. we're good to go. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I want to direct a question to you for our older sure. viewers. Mm-hmm. And uh, our boomers, mm-hmm. parents age, they're getting older. Right. And so uh, I read an article that says that $79 trillion mm-hmm. worth of, you know, of equity and value is due to be transferred. Now, let's say the scenario on this property, right? The gentleman happens to pass away. Mm-hmm. What in the world would happen then if you can't verify? So we will need a, a certified copy of the death certificate. Okay. And we also gonna, so we also need to make sure if the, if he was married, uh huh, and if the spouse didn't sign a document called a spousal deed, because you got to remember, Ooh. Nevada is a community property state. Yes. So let's say he was married, and the wife did not sign a document or relinquish an interest, uh-huh. then they're more likely gonna have to go to probate. So there's a lot of things that come into play when people transfer these properties outside of escrow. Yes. Okay, because they don't have the capability to do a title search. Right. Let's say, William, I'm transferring my property to you. Uh-huh. Hey, you know what, Vic? I'm going to give you $50,000, whatever the case may be. Sure, here you go, William. But you don't know what's against my property. Correct. You don't know that I have a loan for 300000 You don't know that I have a, a solar panels in yes. the property. So it's important to make sure that if you're going to do these type of transfers, you, you know what you're doing. You know what you're getting into. Yes, you know? good advice, good mm-hmm. advice. Let's go back to our boomer uh, generation. Yep. And um, probate. Right. Now, I've represented buyers Mm -hmm. in purchasing probates. And Mm -hmm. so I recall we submit an offer and then we end up in front of a judge. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's attorneys involved. And the the judge says, does anybody want to bid on this property? So there is a process. There is. Right. So when someone passes away, all their belongings go into an estate. Mm -hmm. Right. The estate of and the person's name. 
there is a thing called a living trust. Mm -hmm. So it either goes into probate or your your assets are already in a in a living trust. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an insight as to the two? What does one do and what does another do? And what is the benefit from what I hear is a living trust is more beneficial, correct? Well, I'm going to give you my insight on the title point of view correct. on the living trust. Yes. So with the living trust, I mean, it, it pretty much breaks everything down. Who gets the property? Who's authorized to sell the property, right? Mm -hmm. And that actually, William, it is one of the best ways to protect yourself against title fraud meaning seller impersonation. Because right now, there are people that are actually selling houses from underneath the sellers. Wow. They're targeting these sellers that have free and clear properties or yes. land, okay? They're making a fake ID, oh and God. they're actually opening up escrow and closing escrow. Wow. So with the fir one of the first line of defense, to be honest with you, the best way to put your title is under a trust. Because whenever you sell the home, the title company is gonna need a copy of your trust to make sure you're authorized to sell that property. Gotcha. So here's a tip. I actually has never have never given in this tip until now because that's okay. a really good question. And the trust, what it's also going to do in case the seller passes, uh -huh. it's going to stipulate in there who the beneficiaries are. You know what's going to happen. Gotcha. So that way it prevents your beneficiaries or your family from going through a probate, which the probate can be a few thousand dollars and it can be lengthy depending on how busy the courts are. Correct. So it will be a good benefit for people to put the properties under a trust. But again, this is not legal advice. They Correct. have to consult with their attorneys to 100%. see what their scenario and works best for them. That That is great advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just keep in mind, we are giving information. We're not attorneys. And we will continue to encourage you to yes. review your legal needs yes. with your attorney. Yes. Yeah, so, little disclaiming in there. Yes. <laughs> Very smart. Mm -hmm. um, now, just going back to living trust, mm -hmm. right? You have a property and you put it in a living trust. Right. While you are li living, mm -hmm. the individual that controls the living trust mm -hmm. can sell the property. They can yeah. they can lease it. They have full control of yeah, the you property. Have full control. Yeah, absolutely. The only time that that document becomes, let's just say, live mm -hmm. is when that individual passes away. Yeah, you, the, they will need to take the title to make sure everything's correct. Uh -huh. Okay. Another thing, uh, if you're going to do a trust, make sure you keep this in a safe correct. deposit box. You have no idea how many people have make do a trust and lose the trust yes okay uh so it's very important to keep it because without it you're stuck you right. can't do anything about it you know because we're gonna need proof we're gonna need proof that you are in fact the beneficiary to make sure you're able to sign the uh sign for the asset so it's really important right so the contrary is not having a living trust it goes into uh an estate and then the judge plus attorney fees come into play correct that that it's for instance, if the pers if the people don't know how to vest their property, uh -huh. okay, so for instance, there's uh, joint tenants with rights survivorship, uh, tenants in common, there's different ways to vest your property. Can you explain vesting? Absolutely, so the vesting is how you're gonna take title, okay? So for instance, my opinion, uh -huh. this is just my opinion, the best way to take title in Nevada if you're married, it's husband and wife as joint tenants, why? because both of you are 100% owners of these properties as your right. tenancy. So if something happens to one, the other one automatically takes 100% of the property without going through a probate. Correct, now, and then we, we do advise our viewers to consult with an attorney on that one, right? Yeah, and okay. what I'm gonna do also, I can I can send you a waste of uh, vesting uh -huh. and what it explains, what it does, so that way any of your viewers will like a copy, you can send it directly to Perfect. them. But it's also important to know that because uh -huh. let's say that you did not vest it properly, then uh -huh. it can cause an issue if something does happen, it can definitely cause a Perfect. lot of problems. And I just wanted to share, I'm going to have a, a, uh, a guest coming up next week mm -hmm. that's going to talk more in detail about living trust. And that will and be great. I'll be, to yes. be, I'll be tuning in. Too. And I'm looking forward to that conversation. And they're going to get more into how it protects you. And, right. And um, we'll go from there. Yeah. But, you know, thank you for your insight oh, on absolutely. that. Okay, let's change the subject a bit. What are you seeing the market doing at this present moment? What are what are your challenges? What are what is your insight on as to what's going on? Because you're on ground, you're in the you know you're in the transactions and you're yeah. seeing yeah. these closings happen. What is what is it? What have you seen? So right now, the number one issue we're seeing uh -huh. is when people did a modification years ago. Okay, so I have a rule. Mm -hmm. What people did three years 
or more ago, uh -huh. it's coming back to life right now. Okay. So we're seeing properties with a lot of title issues that they change title to the property to somebody else. Oh, now boy. this person's nowhere to be found or this person it's found, but you know what, well, the property's worth some money now, I want my, we're seeing that. And the number one thing that we're seeing is that people, okay, remember this forbearances? Mm -hmm. So when uh, COVID was running rampant, the, right. the federal government said, hey, if you need help paying your mortgage, you don't have to pay it for a year. Correct. And then lenders were also even giving an extension, right? A lot of people think they don't have to pay the money back. But what they maybe didn't understand was that the am amount they didn't pay went right. to the back of the loan. Can you explain the back of the loan? Yeah. That's a, that's a real estate term, and I, I want my our listeners to understand that. Yeah, so it's, uh, oh my gosh, I'm looking for the term, and I haven't had my coffee, so I'm running a plan. It's okay. It's called a deferred amount. Okay, okay so if you, owe, if you owe a hundred thousand, okay, and you your payment let's say was a thousand dollars, and you didn't pay for twelve months, that's twelve thousand dollars. Correct. Okay, so this went back to the back of your original loan. So if you got a loan for a hundred thousand, they're gonna add it to that loan. So when you order your payoff, and your payoff, it's pretty much how much do I owe in total? Uh -huh. You're gonna see this is how much you owe, and this is the deferred amount that you owe us for those payments. Correct. However, a lot of people thought or still think that the money that was just hell, that they don't have to pay. It just went poof somewhere. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so now what's happening is they're coming in to sign the seller documents uh -huh. and they're expecting $25,000, $40,000 more than what's on the documents. But once we show them the payoff amount, well, you know, here's the original balance. This is the balance that you have paid so far. Okay. And this is that deferred amount. Well, what is that? Well, oh. th did you stop making payments? Oh, yeah, during COVID. Correct. Well, that's that amount. Well, I, th I didn't think I need to pay it. Well, right. do, yeah, they do need to pay it. So that's what's happening a lot. Right. Um, the issue with forbearances, and I'm glad because a lot of people got great help. The issue with them that they did not record on credit reports. Oh, jeez. Okay. They're not recorded uh -huh. on the county recorder. So as a title company, we check for what anything that's recorded. These are not recorded. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so they look at the title report. Wait a minute. Surprise, we didn't see surprise. it here. It's not there. The only way to find out if if you order a payoff, and this is actually what I tell the uh, realtors all the time. Right uh -huh. now, you're gonna ask if you do a listing presentation. Yes. Ask one more additional question and it's gonna save you, and it's gonna save your sellers, and it's gonna be such a happy transaction because they, imagine being a seller, yes. a lot of these sellers, oh man, I'm moving, I'm buying a house here, I'm buying this, and then finding out that you're getting- A little bit less. Not a little. A lot of less. A lot of less. <laughs> so the number one thing that agents gotta ask, yes. it added to the listing presentation, did you do a forbearance? Did you do a forbearance? And the, if the answer is yes, Yes. Before I can give you an accurate net sheet of how much you're gonna net, let's call your bank and order that payoff Perfect. and see what the deferred amount is. Now, can you ask the uh, the lender what is my balance? Will the balance contain that information? It's very payoff is the best. It's very tricky. Uh -huh. It's very tricky. They have to ask. Okay, what is that? And give me that deferred amount. The deferred amount. Here's the if we have time, gotcha. I can tell you a quick story. What happened to a personal sure. friend of mine? Okay, so he. He got a property from somebody doing this, the deed. Okay, so he gave this person sixty thousand, no, eighty thousand dollars. Okay, eighty thousand dollars. You're signing over your property to me. I'm keeping your loan. Okay, because you have a low interest, so I'm keeping your loan. Okay, but this is without the bank. Without the bank. The without the, yeah, exactly. Okay, so now he oh puts boy. forty thousand dollars into rehabbing this property. Okay, so now he, he's what in one hundred and twenty thousand D. Uh -huh. So he opens up escrow. Hey, um, I'm gonna need this lady to come in. Why? Well, because this deed was done outside of escrow and I wanna make sure that she did in fact sign it and right. she did in fact know what she was doing. Well, this lady was nowhere to be found. Oh no. Okay. Well, then we get the title report. There's a, there's a first loan and a second loan, okay? And they did a modification. Now he's thinking once we got the payoff, the deferred amount was on that, that second loan. No, it was on the first loan. Oh no. So now we, we have to pay a first, a $60,000 oh deferred amount, and now we have to pay a second for $50,000. Wow. Okay. So at the end of the transaction, he's an investor. Instead of netting 
what he was going to net, he only uh, netted $1,000. Wow. That's, and he got lucky. He got very lucky. Yes. Okay. And But that's the importance of title insurance and checking title to make sure there's nothing. And William, yes. title and escrow is boring. Yes. I admit it. It's pretty boring. I'm trying to make it fun for people, and I'm trying to get them to understand the importance of it, where I think the consumer needs a little bit of knowledge. So I'm glad that you're doing this podcast and talking about title and escrow because yes. – a lot of the times people don't have no clue about it. And right. I think people need to start learning even their options as far as pricing is concerned. So, mm -hmm. oh, man, kudos to you, man. And, you know, that's why we align ourselves with individuals like you that have the experience and know-how that will help us protect our clients. Thank and, you. And, you know, uh, our specialty is to find a property. Mm -hmm. And then once the closing happens, we refer them to individuals like yourself mm -hmm. that will help close it mm -hmm. and protect them from the past right Just i like that ones, you're yeah. a protector of the past we're a protector of the past man. wonderful what else do you see in the market what, what is your feel <sighs> what does your feeler say my feel is that honestly like i told earlier we're seeing a lot of these properties that have a lot of title issues you know because people did something we're seeing properties come out coming back from 2008 where they did loan modifications and that's another story yes. in itself uh we're seeing um uh, people that sign certain agreements, okay? And these agreements are recorded, yes. okay? So people that got loans and again, oh and they, yeah, they <laughs> tie themselves to something with that property, there's an agreement. Uh, we're seeing uh, more water easement. And what I mean yes. by that, a lot of people, the, the, the water company is paying pretty good. Like if you remove your your beautiful grass, yes. they're actually paying, they pay you. Yes, they okay? pay you. So we're seeing these come up now. Yes. Okay. Where they're selling the property. Wait a minute. There's a water easement. Yes. And what that means is that you cannot build a pool in that backyard because the seller got some money to make it into a desert landscaping. Yes. There's a way around it, but you will have to pay that money back to the to the water. You know, store. I had an instance when where the seller didn't disclose that, mm -hmm. and now our documents include that, and the the water district said no way. No. But the house already had a pool, so. Yeah. That was, they just they just couldn't put a grass in it. Well, but you know, and the thing is, a lot of sellers don't even know what they have, and it's not their fault. It's really not their fault, you know, because a lot of the times they're getting uh, water filtration systems, okay. and they don't know that these companies will actually record a document. Absolutely, it's called a UCC to make sure they get paid. Yes. Um. I mean, so that's why the importance of doing a title search, you know, gotcha. it, it's huge. And, gotcha. and and you know it. Every Absolutely. Time, every time you have a listing, you send me the address and we're running a, a, a search for you to make sure like we're covering all your bases. A hundred percent. There's no, there's no issues on the property. So. Well, to what you can see on, until you get the payoff too, right? Because right. Yeah. There's down. certain other things that the seller has to provide so you can do your job exactly exactly okay, perfect how about the market oh, man i a, i have a whole thing that i want to discuss with you but i want your insight first that's a loaded question right now <laughs> well know, i know i, we I don't... think i think everybody has different opinions i mean I, I don't think i have found somebody aligning with my opinion and vice versa and it's good man that's what i that's why i love it I have not been able to kind of predict it, right? Before Correct. we used to make educated prediction based on what we're seeing. Yes. Um, the news has a lot to do with it. Absolutely. You know, the decisions of the feds has a lot to do with yes. it. But what I'm seeing is either we have great weeks or great days, and then we have a bad week. Yes. Where there's like, man, what is going on? Everything went silent. Yeah. Um, a lot of people thought that 2024, we're going to start out with the, with the boom, like interest are going to go down, which I hope they will, but I don't see that happening until after the summer, Yes, maybe even further down. And again, that's my personal opinion. Um, so I see the market kind of like hills and valleys, man. Right. It's like right. up and down, up and down, up and down, but we keep climbing up little by little. So yes. that's my opinion. Okay. Well, I like your opinion. I mean, it, it, it kind of coincides with where I where I'm thinking, and uh, I may have a controversial view. Okay. Okay. But I think the numbers justify my my uh, opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a good time to lower interest rates. Let okay. me explain why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, our inventory is ridiculously low. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a reason behind that. Okay. I, I, I read an article that talks about boomers holding on to their properties. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're going to hold on to their properties. 
There is value in having a loan that's only two or three percent. Absolutely. So ninety percent of individuals have a loan that's less than four percent. I could be wrong. It's either four or five percent. Mm -hmm. Right now, interest rates are at six percent. Imagine having a loan that's only two percent, and then you want to move, but the loan, the new loan that you have, is around five or six percent. Right. That's that's a big jump. Right. So it makes sense to hold on to that loan. So a lot of boomers are saying, you know what, I would like to downsize, but what's going to happen? My interest rate's going to go back to 6%. And you're no. probably going to get a less house. Yes, and you're going to have a smaller house. Now, yeah. there's a lot of two-story homes uh, that individuals, you mm -hmm. know, the boomers, and they don't want to go up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. they, they, they do want to downsize. If they had the equity, they will sell it mm -hmm. and they will move. But if, if they don't have the equity... They're gonna have. They're gonna do with it. Why? Yeah. Because they have the value in the loan at two or three percent. Hence, we have a low inventory. Now, we uh, we know that we don't have enough housing in the United States. Right. Everybody's waiting for the interest rates to drop. I think that's a mistake. Let me explain to you why. Um, I was from California. I lived in California, mm -hmm. and I remember seeing. Surfers, there's maybe 12 or 13, and they're right. waiting for that beautiful wave to come. Then everybody rushes. And then everybody, everybody's waiting for that one wave. Mm -hmm. And then you see these other guys having a good time with smaller waves. They're, they're doing their thing. I see home buyers the same way. You have individuals that are waiting for that wave. What is that wave? Low interest rates. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to want to ride the same wave, and they're going to attack the market with low interest low yeah. um, low inventory so it's a catch-22 right so here's the advice that I'm giving my clients okay and I'm gonna go back historically for a bit and I could be off but please right. let me know if I'm off mm -hmm. um, our parents bought houses in the 70s right mm -hmm. there was a time in the 70s that homes were let's say about 40,000 and they went up to 75 right would you advise your parents to buy a house even if it went up to 75,000 I mean, yeah. I mean, look at where they were sitting, yeah. standing at now. Yeah. They're going to have equity. Right. Right? In the 90s, oh, I had a friend who bought a house just before the market crashed. Right? Everybody let go of their houses, but she says, no, I love this house. She was, I think it was around 450000 The house was beautiful, 2,900 square feet, single story, pool, three-car garage, you name it. Right? When the house was worth 340000 330000 Right. right? But she owed about four fifty. But she right. says, "No, this is my home. I want to die in this home." She was young. I'm going to fight for it. We thought she was crazy. Fast forward now, that home is worth between six hundred and fifty to seven hundred thousand. I know people too that kept their house, and what I tell people is like, well, "What is a good time to buy? What's well, that a good time for you?" Correct. Like you know, can you afford the payments if something happened? Then who cares what the market does? You know what I mean? Because it's, people like these. Correct. So, it's. You know, I thought she was crazy, but now I look at her and I was like, what a genius. Right. You know, she kept her home. She fought for it. And now she's she's living the life. She doesn't have to worry about it. She has plenty of space. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Now, going back to my analogy with, you know, mm -hmm. the 70s and such, there is a consistency in real estate in certain markets, in mm -hmm. metropolitan markets. I lived in California. Um, homes in California in the 90s were, let's say, 340, 350. Mm -hmm. And look at the homes now in California. Yeah, they're looking are. at a million dollars. Yeah, for a two bedroom. For a even. Two bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. So my my response is I cannot predict the future. However, real estate is consistent. In yeah. in large metropolitan areas. Now, yeah. Las Vegas, we have gaming, mm -hmm. which we've always had. And now we're becoming a sports mecca. We're right? Be the we have sports the Raiders. capital of the world. Yeah. Now we're gonna have the A's coming on board. Now we have movie, mm -hmm. movie companies yeah. moving in. Yeah. So we are still growing. So I have a feeling that now the market is a good time to buy because if you look 10 years in the future, there's a good chance that the values of the homes will continue. Yeah. Well, you know, like you said, that's how you look at it. I mean, another one of my predictions is, and like I said, maybe I'm wrong, but this is yes. just me and that's my personal opinion. Correct. You know, the credit card debt is at an all-time high. Yes. Okay. So I'm thinking people will gonna have to refinance to pay off the 25, 29 yes. percent interest rates, even if their even if their property goes up from the three percent to a six six point five. 
Mm -hmm. They're actually probably going to be saving money having a higher mortgage rate yes. and payment than to be paying, let's say, four or five credit cards at 25%. Yes. I'm thinking we're probably going to see a small refi boom coming here soon. Cool. So that's know. interesting. I never thought about that. Yeah. And yeah. you're right. Interest, yeah. uh, interest rates on credit cards are going up. A lot. And yes. it's, there's not stopping and people still use them. People use credit cards a lot. Yes. Man. I mean, look at the, that's, the inflation people are spending. Correct. Okay, look at look at the car market. People yes. just bought cars like crazy. Yes. So I'm thinking we're probably gonna see a lot of uh, home equity liner credit coming up. We're uh -huh. gonna see refinances so people can debt consolidate all those credit cards because yes. it makes sense. Listen, I'm paying three thousand dollars a month in credit cards. If I refinance, I'm gonna pay all of my debt and my payments gonna like only gonna be up fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand. I'm still saving at least a thousand dollars a month. That's how people are going to look at it. So refinance, you refinance, see Refinance, I see, okay, I see cool. a boom. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see in a couple months. And I, here's a message to those individuals that are waiting for the interest rates to drop. There is such a way. There's two things that I want to remind you of. And as a matter of fact, I just was with a home builder uh, yesterday working with some clients. Home builders are buying down the interest rates below 6%. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good way. If you're rate sensitive, uh, give me a call. And I can help you with not only getting a lower interest rate with a builder, but they're giving incentives like closing cost and rate buy downs. Rate buy down means they will provide funds so you can bring your rate down okay. to a more favorable. So there's one. Number two is you can also buy down the rate. And I'm not a lender. Well, I'm going to invite a lender to talk about those yeah, things. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah. So if you're rate sensitive, there is opportunities for you. Uh, the most important thing is give us a call. Give me a call. I'm here. I'm going to share my social media uh, links below. And, you know, Victor, I, I think we have a lot of information. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, good, a lot of good information. A lot of good yeah, information. It was good. Let, let me ask you another question before we go. Can you share with us your contact information so individuals that have direct questions, would you mind if no, they contact mind. you? I don't mind. So, yeah, my okay. number is 702-379-8807. Uh, my email is vvasquez with Z at security first, number one ST dot yes. com. Number one ST. <laughs> yeah, number one ST dot com. Not yes. the one. Yeah, so yeah. that's my email. Like I said, I love answering questions, love helping people because, uh, man, I want to be an advocate to have people understand title insurance and right. what they're really getting into because it's it's a lot, even it's a lot easier for us to kind of prevent things and then not having to deal with them later. So Absolutely. Yeah, you know, no, I do get a lot of phone calls about title and you know i always refer them to experts like you oh, thank you yeah yes. we're starting to see a lot anything of anything else that you want to add that you think it's important for people to know about the title business uh, anything you can add sure just let me add one more thing um go to the county recorder's office okay google county recorder's office uh, recording notification service it's the first link okay it's going to ask you two questions it's going to ask you for your email address and your partial number Make sure you sign up for that because okay. what that does, if anybody records anything against your property, the county is going to notify you right away. Oh, good And tip. it's better to find out, yeah, even though it's recorded, but it's better to find out now and do something about it rather than waiting when you're selling your property or refinancing. It's like, wait a minute, what is this? I didn't record that. I wasn't aware yeah, of that. So program. it's a really good system. They'll notify you right away if something gets recorded. Um, so make sure you guys sign up. And if you have any questions about obtaining your parcel number, I'll be glad to show you. <laughs> It's not very difficult. You look into a county record and you enter your your address and then you're going to see something with parcel number with the yep. number thing. And it should be a seven. No, it's, uh, I believe, 11 digits. 11 digit number. And if you have any questions about obtaining that, I'm, I'm here to help. Yep. Victor, it's always a pleasure no, to it, have it you. It was fun. It was and fun. Thank you. And I, I think I'm going to have you come again mm -hmm. and uh, just fill us in as to your insight of the market. Absolutely, and, man. It's getting active for me. I just had about, I don't know, for some reason, again, talking about a wave, I had like the same, you know, like buyers just call me all at once. Well, and then uh, my partner, Jose Mata, he's uh, he's been working with a buyer mm -hmm. that wants a home with a pool and he's been writing offers and there's multiple offers. So wow. we're seeing activity out there. So let's write that wave. Keep and, writing it. And we got to send you some, some escrow let's soon. It. Let's do it. Victor Vasquez, thank you oh, so much. Anytime. Once again, tell me your company name. Security First. Let me title. try it, okay? Go ahead, try it. Security First Title. There you go. Oh, that you worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Remember, this is 
Real Insight with William McKnight. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to myself, William McKnight, my number is 702-328-3010. My email is William at Sweet Home LV. You can find my website, Sweet Home LV. And I am here for you with any real estate questions related to the greater Las Vegas area. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. And thank you for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.